Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 6, Episode 31. Family, Fidelity, and Fish Fries. This, this episode was um, very stormy heavy. <clears throat> it was very stormy heavy. Um, we start with them. They are out riding. They go out riding separately in their respective... Toys, I guess regularly. She has a slingshot. He has one of them bikes that kind of look like a slingshot. Like it's a motorcycle, but it ain't. You know, like it's one of them motorcycles that ain't really long. It, like I don't know the, the correct term for it or like what, what the name of it is. But if you saw it, then you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> anyway. They um, head to, I guess, you know, like a little taco spot. I don't know. But they sit down and talk, and they're talking about her uncle, um, who, you know, she spoke to about her mom and aunt. This is her, I'm assuming this is her mom's brother. And so the siblings are all on board to, tr to try to get Debbie and um, Aunt Lisa back on, you know, speaking terms at least. Um, so, so Stormy thinks that it's a good idea to have a fish fry. It's going to be in Mississippi. Um, she would love to have Courtney there. Courtney is saying, excuse, excuse me, Courtney. Courtney says, I will not be there. He won't be there. So you can count him out. Um, but he, you know, he, he sends his emotional support. Um, Melody, she drops by an event. Nell and and um, Chris, they do a book by a book bag. <laughs> what was I about to say? <laughs> they do a book bag drive. You know, like when you when you stuff all the book bags with the school supplies. A school supply drive. That's what it's called. Cause in my mind, my my mind was saying real loud, toy drive, toy drive, toy drive, and it's like, no, no, <laughs> it wasn't toys. It was school supplies, um, but they but she's doing a little back to school event. Mel drops by. She pulls him to the side. She talks to them about Houston. Thank you. It was great. Thank you for hosting. Um, it was peaceful, unlike all of their other trips. <laughs> and we have to rehash Ve Vegas as well as Gatlinburg, where Martel and Mel are always arguing. Um, she says Mel. Um, I mean, I'm male. Martell reached out to her to meet. So, of course, she's leery, but she's going to go around there and see what he wants. Stormy and her cousin Butter, they take the drive to Mississippi. Um, Stormy, she has plans, you know, to get her mom and Aunt Lisa back on speaking terms. She's very, you know, hopeful that this will work. This will be nostalgic enough to bring everybody back together, including Aunt Lisa and her mama. Um, Stormy, she pulls up to the fish fry. You know, she says she gonna volunteer to, to, to fry the fish, even though she doesn't know the first thing about frying fish. Um, her mom and Aunt Lisa, they, you know, walk right past each other. They don't speak to one another. Stormy has to pull them to the side. Okay, so what you y'all all right? Y'all gonna talk? What What's going on? Um, Lisa, Betty says that, um... She 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 feels she feels abandoned because you know Stormy gets them to you know okay use one word to explain to to explain how you're feeling right now. Betty says she feels abandoned because she has been left with the duty of caring for the for the elderly parents. Now one has passed, and so now she's always got Mama around her house, you know, and she she got a husband that works out of town. No, she got a husband. That um, I think her husband is there. It's it's Aunt Lisa. Aunt Lisa got the husband that work out of town, and so she's saying, "I got a husband that work out of town, and so when my husband come back home, girl, I'm trying to be with my man. I don't know what you want me to do." And Betty is like, "Girl, you need to come around me and help me with our mama. I don't know how you feel like you don't have to step in, but you need to step in." <laughs> And then they start arguing again, you know, and this is when Stormy has to has to pull them to the side again, you know, okay. Can 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 you can can we 
at least just use one word, you know, and then Betty says she abandoned. Um, Lisa just wants to know what the expectations are. Like, what do you expect out of me? Betty say, okay, at least one weekend out of the month. Please just take your mama. Um, Lisa says she can agree to all of that. And then, you know, now she want to force a hug. And they're like, girl, you, you taking it too far. They ain't going to do none of that hugging. Um, so, okay, we, we good. Everybody, everybody is going, is going in the right direction. Mel put on her freakum dress and go down there to meet Martel. Now, let's put a pin here. Mel, why you wore that? Now, listen, I get, I know why you wore it. <laughs> I know why you wore it, but why you do that? Like, I know why she did it. I know why she did it. I understand why she did it. I know why she did it. And you know what? It is what it is. Because he can't never, 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 never going to get it. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Never gonna get it, 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 never get it. You bet. But yes, Mel. Listen, girl, I get it. I get it. So I don't even let me let me. I was trying to play devil's advocate for just a just a just just teach. But no, girl, I know why you wore that dress, girl. Wear it and wear it next time. Where when he pick up the kids, okay? Cause he's never gonna get it, 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 never get it. Anyway, she go down there to meet Martel. He got flowers and cards and candy and all kinds of gifts. <laughs> That's cause he's on his guilt trip about the night before. You know what I'm trying. You know what I'm talking about. Think about it. What is a man trying to tell you? <laughs> Who I be cracking myself up? Cause listen, it's either ADHD or just good wit and humor. Now, for those of you youngins that don't know Betty, then you didn't understand where I went with that. But those of you that know Betty, you from the school of Betty, then you know. You know exactly, you know exactly what song I was talking about. Anyway, um, Mel says that it's a nice gesture that, you know, you you brought the, the flowers, but give them to the kids. Give them to the kids, and then she tell them later. Give them to the kids and tell them it was for mama. <laughs> Woo! So anyway, they, they go and get tea. He pays. She don't even pull out her wallet. She look at him like... It was just like four dollars. <laughs> um, they sit down. Mel is, you know, sipping her tea in confusion because Martel is on his whole spill about how wrong he was and how sorry he is. And this is that and the third. And Mel is looking at him like, I, I don't really care. <laughs> like at this at this point, the all of this is just unnecessary because it's too late. It's it's just way too late for all of that, but whatever. He say he want to be in a good place, you know. He wants to be in a good place. Um, she's like I said, she's sipping her tea in confusion. Um, she's like, this is one of the most gaslighting experiences that I've ever been through. And he's like, you know, of course, confused. Why would you say that? <laughs> he's just trying to get in a good place, you know. And she's just like, we're not though. Like, and we haven't been. Like, you do all of this. For the cameras, but then be behind the scenes on social media and all of that. Just showing your ass, you know. Putting the battery in your baby mama back. She be on there acting up. You know, like, you don't... Just please. <laughs> Just save it. Just save it. Um, She ain't never... She say she ain't gonna never forget him. They ain't gonna never get on the right, get on the right foot. <laughs> I said, damn, not never. Not never. Not never. Martel says he's been trying to wave the, the, the white flag for, for the past three years. And she like, listen, all them flags look like red flags to me. I just, she just don't see it for you, Martel. 
That's just the bottom line. Just pick up the kids when you're supposed to pick them up. There's an emergency pertaining to the kids. Make sure you call, you know, call and let me know what's up. Don't be texting me dumb shit like when they with you. <laughs> she don't care about so-and-so riding they bike. She know they can ride their bike. Like, you ain't got to send her videos of that. You ain't got to be like, oh, look at us. We're hanging out. Don't do that. Because <laughs> I know exactly. I know. <laughs> I know that's what Marcel be doing. I know that's what he be doing. He be trying to get in all the communication he can. <laughs> but what? He's never going to get it. 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 Never get it. That's a good one there. Anyway, like I'm not finna do all the the, the all the they 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 sat there for really no reason at all because Martel, you don't seem to understand that this woman is yeah she's still bitter. Now listen, we ain't gonna say Mel ain't still bitter. Like she ain't still got something there because she does. She tries to say I'm just I'm not mad with you no more. I'm not I'm not there anymore. Girl, you showing up in this freedom dress shows that you want to stick it to his ass. <laughs> and we understand. We definitely get it. We we understand. So go on, on, you know. Do you, girl. Do you. Um. Anyway. She got a plane to catch. <laughs> so, yeah. She just, she just leaves. Like, oh. He wearing a ring she bought him. She she asked him, "Why are you wearing that ring that I bought you? Like, what? Like, why are you still wearing that?" And he gonna say, "Why are you wearing the ring I bought you?" She like, "I bought this ring a year ago. Thank you very much. <laughs> you ain't bought me nothing over here. Why are you wearing it?" And he say, "He he's manifesting. I don't know what you manifesting. <laughs> I don't know what you manifesting, but you might as well take it to the pawn shop." You might as well go get you a little coin for it, cause <laughs> I ain't gonna do it again, y'all. <laughs> I could have though, you know. Like there's, it's just so many times I can segue into the fact that he ain't never gonna get it. <laughs> um, moving on, Kimmy and Maurice, they got they they done they down to the hotel for a day night. She done decorated the boudoir, you know, rose petals, and champagne <laughs> and you know lingerie she got on all of that he comes in you know Maurice look like he's just ready to get right to it but you know no we have we can at least we have to at least film some type of a scene here so they sit down and you know she shares you know first she thanks him for being what a husband is supposed to be we thank our husbands now for sticking to their vows no, Kimmy, we don't never do that. He's supposed to sit by your ass and be your support system while you go through chemotherapy and while you 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 know while you're still healing from the ramifications of, of the chemotherapy, all of that. He's supposed to. And so we don't give cookies and 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 brownie points for what the nigga's supposed to do. Now, had he done so the, 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 you know, the extra, gone the extra mile and brought in doctors and nurses, you know, to be at this, at your side. If he had done all, you know, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> but you were truly there for me. Girl, that's your husband. He ain't your boyfriend. Now, the boyfriend, yeah, you, you thank the boyfriend. But husband, that's in the vows, ain't it? <laughs> that ain't it. That wasn't in your vows. That, that, it was in mine. So, I mean, listen, it's expected. I'm just not understanding, but okay. Um, she thanks him for that. <laughs> um, and, you know, they move on, you know, to how she felt about some of those comments he did make, you know, about her body changing and the way she looked. That was, you know, it was, she, ch she changed. And him highlighting it, other people highlighting it, all of that. She didn't feel good about that. You know, she waking up and seeing her skin look the way it looked because of, you know, the, the drugs and the sickness and all of that. Because of all of that, you know, losing her hair, like it, it, it took a toll on her self-esteem. And so it also is going to take a toll in the bedroom because if I don't feel sassy, then what are we doing? 
it's one thing to be with your bonnet on and you know you just in your t-shirt <laughs> And in his and in his draws, that's how I be laying around. <laughs> like I'm not a like you know, like you you there there are there there's times when you dress it up, and then there's most times like me <laughs> where I'm comfortable as fuck around here. That still don't mean that to him, it, I'm not something he ain't trying to knock down anywhere. You know, like it, for for a man, it don't matter. <laughs> so. I get what Kimmy is saying. Like we do, some some women are like that. They want to they want to have to dress it all the way up. Like they they to to feel like to feel in the mood, you know. But I can't imagine being in her position. That's where I was going with that. <laughs> I can't imagine being in her position, you know, suffering with what she was suffering with, and still having sex with your husband, or still, you know, even because. Ain't no way you feel sexy. Ain't no way. You know, like, with a bonnet on, you know, and, and a t-shirt and whatever, like, that don't matter. But that is no comparison to what she was dealing with and the fact that it didn't correlate for that man. I just don't understand. Anyway, they go through all of that. You know, he gets up with a joke. He say he been in the gym. He took no, he, he heard what she said. He been in the gym and he done rolled. He done drew some abs on his stomach. Whatever. That's a cute little moment, I guess, for them. <laughs> and and you know, and then, you know, we eventually we gotta go have the sex, you know. Cause cause doing all of this, you know, intimacy work has has revved up some things. So, you know, they put the cameras out and and and, and that's that. Um, Marceau, he's over there at their rental property. And, um, you know, they were renovating in there and he, um, she, Tisha comes in and she want to know, you know, when he's going to be done with this house, when she going to get her office, you know, all of those things. And he of course has put everything in front of her office and her bottom line is I want my damn office in 10 days. And that's just that I want to move in this house in like 15 days because <laughs> their lease is up at the apartment well she got an extension but he gonna say well you got an extension so the lease isn't up she said the lease is up i'm with you on that tisha don't play with me let we're not gonna wait till the last minute or none or nothing the lease up it's up i don't care what i asked for it's up <laughs> And so that's what that is. She's she's not budging on that. Get you you better get that lady her office. Give that lady her office. Then they start talking about um Houston and how you know his feelings were hurt. You know, of course she got to say how her feelings were hurt. Marcel says she she was gaslighting him. Um, and then Tisha brings up how this lack of trust is a problem because listen, if they don't have trust, they don't have nothing. So I guess they don't have nothing. So where do we go from here? How do we move forward? That man going to look at her and say, Tisha, have you ever stepped out on me? And Tisha said, I can't answer that for you. So how do we move forward? I was like, How does it feel, Marceau? How that? How all that tastes? How all that tastes? Because that's what you've been giving your wife for the past six years. All the years we done known y'all, that's how you do her. And he gonna say that is, it's alarming, and you know, you, like, like, it, like he finna give her an ultimatum or something for not giving him a straight answer. You can just stew on it. <laughs> he gonna say, "Well, you 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 done set the rules, so I know how to play." Don't now. What 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 does that mean? See, they playing with us anyway. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm not buying it, y'all. Anyway, until next time. Until next time. <laughs> Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's called me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.